Hey guys, it's the Budget Epicurean, and today I'm bringing you a super simple recipe um, for butternut squash risotto. It's one of my personal favorites. It's super quick, especially with the Instapot, but you can also make it on the stove. I'll tell you how. Um, but before we start, I'd like to give you a moment to get all your jokes out of the way because I am in fact barefoot uh, in my kitchen and very pregnant. <laughs> so uh, there you go. Um, hopefully this little guy will love this as much as I do. Um, so butternut squash is, uh, of course, a squash, uh, or gourd grows on a vine, um, mostly in the late fall and winter time, but it stores beautifully. So this one I've had sitting around my counter for at least three or four months now, and it's still perfectly good as long as it's not, um, moist or not showing signs of mold or mushiness, um, it should be good to go. Um, you do want to give it a quick rinse before you actually cut into it though, because anything that, uh, any bacteria or stuff that's on the skin of the vegetable will get inside when you cut it open. So we're going to give that guy a quick rinse. Um, I also have a onion and some butter for later. We're going to make uh, crispy sage to go on top. Um, some rosemary and thyme to go in the risotto and of course some um, salt, pepper, and garlic. And you can't make a risotto without rice, right? Um, so you can use pretty much any type of rice actually. Arborio is typically used um, for risottos because it's a very starchy uh, medium grain white rice. Um, it's very good for risottos for that slow cooking, um, absorbing the liquids, creating that starch, that creamy texture. Um, but since I'm going to be using the Instapot, it doesn't really matter what I use. Um, it kind of speeds up that whole process, which is great. Um, and of course, you're going to need some liquid. Uh, so I have some broth here that I actually made from some old uh, rib and pork bones. So that is all you need for this entire meal. Um, you can add some extra protein to it if you really want to. You can throw in some uh, diced chicken or... Um, textured vegetable protein. It tastes like beef granules. Um, also some peas would work. I've got some frozen green peas. Legumes are a great protein source. So if you feel like you need that, um, but we're going to just rinse this guy, get all the dirt and storage off of it. Okay. You can see this is a pretty hefty, squash, right? This guy's probably, I don't know, six, eight pounds. Um, so we might not need to use the whole thing. Um, you only need three to four cups of diced squash. Um, if you don't have a uh, fresh squash, that's perfectly fine. You can use frozen too, right out of the freezer. Um, I've never tried it with canned, but I bet something like canned pumpkin would probably work just as well too. Um, the beauty of this recipe is that it's pretty flexible. So uh, if all you have is canned goods, then canned pumpkin or sweet potato, that'll work. Um, if you happen to have a acorn squash or a pumpkin or um, some sweet potatoes instead, that'll work too. Don't even worry about it. So I'm just cutting off the top and bottom and we'll toss those in the compost. You can see that lovely butternut squashy color and the seeds there. Um, I might save some and try to plant it. Why not? So one option if you don't want to have chunks of the squash in your finished risotto, um, you could cook the butternut first and then puree it into a paste. Um, and then just use that paste in the risotto instead of chunks of squash. That works great. I've done that before. Um, it just adds one extra cooking step, which you can roast it in the microwave. You can do it um, in the oven. The Instapot, of course, will make it the fastest option. Um, so I have done that where you cook the squash first and then use the uh, pureed mush and that works 
just as well. But this time we're gonna cook it all together, all at once. 20 minutes and done. It's the best. Um, the only difference if you're, if you don't have an instant pot or pressure cooker and you um, want to do this on the stove top is that it's gonna take a lot more babysitting. So it'll still take about 20 to 30 minutes. Um, but instead of throwing everything in all at once and hitting go, you'll want to put everything in the pot and then add a third of your liquid first and stir constantly um, until that gets absorbed. And then you add another third and stir until it all gets absorbed and then you add the rest. Um, so it takes a little bit more time and effort for sure doing it that way. And I'm all about efficiency. So, so now you can see I just scooped out my seeds. I'm just gonna cut down through the top fat part and I'm gonna try to get just the outer edges of the peel um, because that is thicker and not as tasty and I don't have a vegetable peeler so I'm just doing it with my knife, kind of following the contours of the vegetable and just slicing that thin layer of skin off, leaving just that inside part. So compost all that too. Um, so that's just the nice upper part of the squash. And we'll dice that into small cubes. So whatever size you cut this to is roughly um, the size it'll be coming out of the pot. So you want your pieces to be, you know, pretty small bite-sized um, pieces. You don't want, you know, be chewing on a huge hunk of butternut. Plus it will cook um, faster and more evenly if you do smaller um, pieces like that. So it's not super exact. I probably want about three to four cups worth of squash. Um, if you're gonna throw in some other legume for extra protein like if you want to toss in some um, lentils or white beans or um, peas then you can uh, do two cups and two cups or you can just go all in on the veggies you know more power to you if that's if that's your jam i will not stop you i will never never discourage you from adding more vegetables to your dinner so that's about three and a half cups. So I'll just go ahead and use all of this. So you'll see this took about, well, like a quarter of the whole thing. Um, so the rest of the butternut, I have so many options. Um, I can dice it up just like this and throw it in the freezer and make something else with it later. Uh, I can cook it first and then um, freeze that or put it in all kinds of things. Um, I've made butternut gnocchi before. That's delicious. Um, oh, what else? You can put butternut puree into all kinds of pastas. I can make soup out of it. This onion is mushy and that's not cool. Let's see if we have another one. sat in storage a little bit too long. We don't eat mushy onions, that's weird. So luckily we have more. So I'm just gonna take one small white onion. Um, if you don't have onions, you can use onion powder. Um, you can use shallots. You can just say forget the onions. You don't have to use them. Um, onions just give a great base flavor to, I mean, really like just about anything. Oops. Um, and in most recipes, I haven't found one yet that it didn't work. Um, if you don't have a white onion, you can substitute a red onion as well. So that's always an option. So for our onion, it's just kind of kind of melts into our risotto. Um, so I want to have smaller little pieces. Um, again, we don't want just like big mouthfuls of oniony. Um, we just kind of want it to be all melted throughout the whole dish. Give it that little bit of onion flavor. So I'm dicing it up pretty small. You just cut it in half, lay the flat side down, 
cut lengthways and then across it. So there you go. So I'm gonna try and move most of this into the pot without dropping it. There we go. I'm gonna turn it on to saute mode so that I can get this cooking. There we go. And so some of the butter will be um, later. So after the risotto is all finished, you can certainly just eat it like that straight out of the pan. It's wonderful. My favorite way to kind of elevate it, make it seem a little bit more fancy, um, is to crisp up some sage leaves. Totally optional if you don't happen to have a fresh sage bush in your front yard, um, like some people do. Uh, you, you don't have to do that at all. Um, but if you happen to have access to fresh sage, I highly recommend it. It really gives it kind of the next level. Um, so that's really what the butter's for. But I'm also gonna use about a tablespoon here with the onions um, to help it to uh, get nice and sauteed and start that caramelization of the onions a little bit. I can just sort of start to feel the eye tingles. <laughs> Cutting onions is dangerous business, you know? So, okay. Got one whole diced up onion in there. We're gonna go ahead and add about a tablespoon of butter that I took out of the refrigerator and left at room temperature. So it's pretty nice and workable now. I'm gonna take that into the pot, boop. And I don't know if you can hear it from over there, but it's just starting to sizzle. So um, the butter is melting a little bit. In the middle of the pan. All right, so we'll just leave that go for a second. And let's see, oh, the rice, of course. Um, gonna add, let's see, about a cup and a half of rice. So this is gonna be for um, two people and rice about doubles when you cook it. Um, so this will make me roughly three cups of rice total, um, which should be enough for plenty for dinner and leftovers for um, at least another lunch tomorrow. If you don't want to make quite as much, feel free to scale down. If you're cooking for a group, you know, say you want to serve this at Thanksgiving or Easter, Mother's Day brunch, feel free to scale it up. So I got my rice. And I also got my herbs, my rosemary and my thyme. Um, I've already pre-rinsed them, so I'll just give them a little chop a -roo. So This is gonna go straight into the risotto to give it that nice earthy flavor, you know, rosemary, sage, and thyme are one of the holy trinities of herbs and spices. They go together really, really well and their smell, their flavor just complements each other so nicely. So if you have a little sunny spot on a window or a little patch where you can grow something, I would highly recommend herbs. The return on investment there is fairly large because you can grow a lot of herbs in a very small amount of space and herbs are very, very expensive at the store for not a whole lot. Right? If you've ever seen those little packs where they sell you like four basil leaves for $3, or you can have a whole plant full of it <laughs> for $3, you know, buy the plant and then grow it. So that only needs a few minutes, just enough to kind of get the onions a little transparent. So you can smell it, smell that lovely oniony flavor. I'm gonna throw in some garlic. If you have real garlic, like garlic cloves, highly recommend that. Put it in with the onions while they're cooking. Um, I just don't have garlic right now, I'm all out. 
I'm waiting for my spring garlic to be ready to harvest. A little bit of black pepper. I'll add a little bit more when it's time to serve. I try to not heavily um, salt my things right at the start of cooking. I'll do it at the table. Some people disagree and that's okay. So I've got my onions, my spices, my rice. Like I said, I'm not doing it the traditional way where you stir and stir and stir, so the type of rice doesn't matter as much. Um, so I just uh, went with the brown rice because it's slightly healthier. Um, that's what I had on hand, and brown rice also has a higher protein content than white rice, so I need a lot of protein right now for this little guy. So I did a cup and a half of rice. That means I want about three cups of my stock. If you don't happen to have stock, water works just as well. Um, you just won't have the, you know, beef or chicken or pork or vegetable flavor that would come with the stock. Um, but of course they also make bouillon cubes. You can use that. I'm gonna pour that all over everything. There we go. That's it. <laughs> You're pretty much done. Dinner's basically made. Um, so I'll just stir everything up real quick and put on my lid. Locked. Set it to steaming so it's shut. And we're going to pressure cook. Oh, I'm gonna turn the saute off. We're gonna pressure cook it for 22 minutes. And that's all there is to it. So I basically just made risotto. Um, when that uh, alarm goes off, and that's it, you can go ahead and eat. Um, but like I said, when that alarm goes off, what I will actually do is melt some butter in a pan and crisp up some sage leaves to go on top. So um, when those are crisped, it only takes literally 30 seconds, a minute. Um, then we'll quick release the steam, sprinkle some sage leaves on and dig in. So that's the plan. All right, welcome back. So our Instapot beeped, which means it is ready to rock. I've got my pan on the stove. I'm gonna start heating it up about medium. Um, we don't wanna put it on super hot because we don't wanna burn the butter. Um, burnt butter is not a great thing. Um, so I'm gonna take about a tablespoon, very generous tablespoon. Um, and just put that right in the pan. Ooh, it's been room temperature a while now. It's a little softened. There we go. Right into the pan. Um, if you don't have or don't want to use butter, you're welcome to use coconut oil or olive oil instead. Um, we're not going to get it up to a really high heat, so any type of oil is fine. Um, and that's really all there is to it. So we're gonna let that melt. As soon as it is melted, throw the sage on top. I'm gonna release the steam from the Instant Pot. Uh, I already turned it off, um, but there might be a loud whoosh of pressure. There might not. Oh, okay, not too bad. So a lot of people don't like pressure cookers because of the pressure component of it. Um, that's actually why I like the electric ones over the stovetop versions um, because the stovetop ones uh, you can't unplug from the wall. <laughs> the electric ones I feel like are maybe a little safer, but what do I know? Um, but as you can see, it's not really that bad. Yes, steam comes out, but it's not super scary. Um, just don't put your hand or your face or any body part over the part where the steam comes out because it is really, really hot um, and you don't want to burn yourself, right? I don't want that. You should not want that either. So you see our butter is pretty much all melted there. And so I'm going to go ahead and just throw my sage right in there. This just came straight off my plant about 30 minutes ago and I rinsed it to make sure there's no, you know, bugs and stuff. Mm, sage is so lovely. I'm going to sprinkle it right in there and with the heat 
it'll start crisping up and you'll hear it get a little crackly. Oh yeah. So the inside of the pot is really, really hot. <laughs> you don't want to touch it, but there's your risotto. Um, so you can see we got the butternut on top with the rice underneath. Give that a nice stir. Everything all kind of mushed together. You can smell the onion, the rosemary, and the butternut squash is pretty soft. So if you want, you can kind of mash it a little bit so it kind of melts into the uh, rice. And because I used brown rice, I also added a couple minutes. If you're using a white rice or an arborio, you can probably get away with 15 minutes or 18 minutes. Um, or if you like your rice really, really soft and mushy, go for 22 or even 25. It won't hurt it, I promise. So now that I stirred it around a little, you can see the butternut squash kind of like melted into the stuff around it. So we'll go ahead and put some of that on a plate. Mm. Nice big scoop. Smells so good. Oh my gosh. Here we go. And I don't know if you can hear from over there, but I can tell the sage is starting to crisp up. It's making making those uh, sizzly noises, kind of like bacon. It's like, like vegan bacon. I'm kidding, it will taste nothing like bacon, but it is really good. Um, so we don't want to do this for too long. We definitely don't want to burn the sage or the butter. It only needs a few minutes. And my secret ingredient, a little sea salt, you just hit it with that. And it makes the perfect topper for this dish. So, like I said, if you don't have the sage, you don't have the time, you don't feel like fussing with this extra step, it's totally okay, you don't need it. Um, just throw a little sprinkle of salt and pepper on at the end and you're good to go. But I think this adds a nice little touch. So, that's all there really is to it. Crispy, buttery sage. You can see it's starting to change color a little bit. And so, you just dump a little bit of that on top. And voila! Butternut squash risotto with crispy sage. It's gonna be real hot, so be careful. Like I said, you can add some extra oomph to this if you want, add some legumes. Um, if you into berry and you want it extra, extra creamy, throw in a little spoonful of sour cream, Greek yogurt. Um, you want to go the vegan vegetarian route, coconut milk, the, the thick fat part off the top. Delicious. I won't judge. Mm. Oh, the rice is perfect, it's soft, creamy. Mm. So good. Very comforting. So I would highly recommend super easy, super quick. Butternut squash risotto. Enjoy.